Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is the sighted feral aiming system calibration. Uh, I'll first show you how to set up uh, the donuts so that you can have an accurate uh, method for consistent practice. First thing to do is to actually draw on your ferrule the siding. If, you, if you're using a carbon fiber or a low deflection shaft, it doesn't really matter where you uh, draw the siding. But in uh, uh, average to substandard or high deflection cues, uh, you'll want to roll the cue if there's a warp in it to where the warp is in the vertical plane then you can draw the siding onto the spline of that shaft on the ferrule. Use your ruler and get a fine pen uh, that's dark enough for you to see and simply on the spline draw your siding a straight line down the ferrule. That simple. Next we need to set up the three donuts for your consistent calibration. You're going to want to aim through the head spot or the foot spot and run the line to the heart of the corner pocket through that center spot on the table. Then about two, two and a half, three balls, your choice. From the rail, you're going to place the first donut. Verify with the cue or uh, some straight edge, I prefer the cue, that the donut through the center spot on the table lines up with the heart of the corner pocket. second donut, you're going to place two balls, again two or three depending on how you want to uh, do your setup. Here I'm using two. The second diamond. Now, take your cue ball and place it at a 45 degree angle, which is from here, it's going to be aiming just past what would be the sixth diamond from this corner. One, two, three, four, which you can't see it, five, six, That's about a 45 degree angle. Roll the ball forward slightly until you can place the two balls behind, then roll it back to where they're frozen. This is where you will be putting your donut.
verify with the ball. As you can see, I'm off by about a quarter inch. So I'll move it back a quarter inch. Till it is on that spot. Another fine adjustment. Here we are. This is a good spot. Now for the final donut. You're going to have to do a measurement. In this case, on this table, my 12 inch ruler is not enough. You'll find on diamond 7 foot tables that a 12 inch ruler will work. This is an 8 foot table, common to a lot of homes. So I'll have to use another measurement device here. And it turns out to be huh, exactly 14, 13, and 7 eighths inches. So I'll need to place my final diamond halfway between there. That is going to be six and fifteen sixteenths. So about seven inches. That should do it. It's a little less, so roll your balls till you have that approximate position, place the cue ball on the line, the final donut again below the cue ball, then make an adjustment as necessary. Well hey, that was perfect right there. So these are the basic three donuts. I'll do the same thing on the other side if I want to practice my right hand cuts. On this side, I'll be practicing with left hand cuts. Okay, let's begin the sided feral aiming calibration exercise. For the first shot, place the one in the head spot with the image of the one aimed in a vertical position at the heart of the corner pocket. Verify it straight in. Place the cue ball on the first donut closest to the side pocket. For this shot, it's essentially a straight shot line up the siding at the 12 o'clock position which is on the top of the queue. This position is good for angles left or right 0 to 12 degrees. Step back away from the ball, do your pre-shot routine. Come down onto the shot with the siding aimed through the cue ball at the target one. Stroke and execute when ready. At any time during the exercise, if you miss a shot, set it up again. Go back, check your vision center, your pre-shot routine, your stance, your stroke. Make adjustments as necessary until you can consistently make the shot. That's why this is called the calibration. For the second shot, 
Line the one up again in the head spot with the one vertical aimed at the heart of the pocket. Place the cue ball on the middle donut. Now, this is a left hand cut, so we'll, we'll be wrote, and it's greater than 12 degrees. It's actually about 22 and a half degrees. Uh, so we'll be rotating the ferrule, the siding, into the 1030 position for the left hand cut. If it were a right hand cut, I would be rotating the siding into the 130 position. This is good for, I like to use it for cuts from 12 to about 30 degrees. Can go a little farther. Um, very, it gets a little sketchy when the pocket difficulty gets high and uh, the, uh, the tip diameter gets a little small. So you're safer to go between 12 and 30 degrees. Now there's two ways to execute the shot. One is you preliminarily rotate the siding into the 1030 position, step back, go down onto the shot with the siding aimed at the target. That's a little challenging, takes some practice. In the beginning, you'll do it this way. Rotate the siding into the 12 o'clock position, step back away from the ball, do your pre-shot routine, go down onto the shot with the siding aimed at the one. Then rotate the siding into the 1030 position. You will no longer be aiming at the one. The siding won't. You then make an adjustment for the siding to aim at the one. Stroke and execute when ready. Now for the third shot, where you place the one is not as essential anymore. In fact, it's not. <laughs> because slightly after the second donut, as the angles begin increasing, the geometric cut angle begins increasing, the system breaks down a bit. However, what we find at this point which is, if you recall from the setup, uh, 45 degree, one ball 45 degrees off of the second diamond, which equates to basically the ghost ball into the corner pocket. And so that is geometrically a 45 degree cut. To make that, if you aim at the one, it will not go in. So at this point, for the 45 degree cut, you want to aim at, depending again on tip di diameter, at about half ball or most likely a hair beyond. So you want to aim at a hair beyond, or what I guess we call also thin, you may call it thin, uh, to the half ball position. Again, the same process where you can begin with the siding rotated. In this case, it's going to be the nine o'clock position for a left-hand cut. If this was a right-hand cut into the side on this side of the ball, uh, I would rotate it into the three o'clock position and use that siding. Here, we're at the nine o'clock position. And again, as you uh, gain skill in this, you can preliminarily begin there go down onto the shot with the siding in the position. For now, as you're learning this, place it again in the 12 o'clock position, step behind the ball, do your pre-shot routine, go down onto the shot with 
the siding aimed at half ball. Then rotate the siding into the 9 o'clock position. Again, you'll note you are no longer, the siding is no longer aiming at the half ball. It's aiming thick or inside. You then make a slight adjustment to where it's aiming at half ball or a hair thin of that half ball. Stroke and execute when ready. Welcome back. This is the sighted ferrule aiming system rail drill. I encourage you to read the article prior to watching this video that was submitted to Pool Dog. We'll give you insight into what's going on here. Now, I, we begin with the cue ball on the head or foot spot, your choice. And uh, you can see the red three ball and the black eight ball on the rail. Now, when you uh, correspond this with the article, the graphics there, you'll see, and I'll probably put it on this video, the red three ball is going to represent the range, uh, end range of the uh, one kind of sighted ferrule aiming, one aiming point with one of the sightings, and the black ball uh, from its position down to the corner will represent the second. So, <clears throat> Essentially, there's only two aim points and sightings that you need to make any rail shot from around the uh, side pocket down to the corner. Now, I'll demonstrate afterwards if the balls are off of the rail or the uh, cue ball is no longer on the head spot, how to make an adjustment to, to still reach your pocket. Uh, this will in turn lead to a sense of angles uh, that uh, are familiar to you that you can then extend out into uh, wider areas of the table uh, for reproducible makes. So let me uh, begin by demonstrating with uh, the top of the range here at the in front of the side pocket uh, the sided ferrule aiming point to make the ball in the corner down the rail. So like in the uh, previous vid video for sided, the sided ferrule, in this uh, shot you're going to be using the three o'clock uh, position because I'm doing a right hand cut and I'll be aiming at uh, half ball thin. So just a hair past half ball. I want you to note something. The cue ball is one, two diamonds from the rail. And from that point, the three ball is one, two diamonds from that head string. This creates a 90 degree triangle with two 45 degree angles. So there's your 45 degree angle. Let me demonstrate this. So as you can see, using the three o'clock sighting and aiming at just past thin hair uh, of the half ball, uh, that will make the ball in the corner pocket pretty directly down the rail. So we can move this down to, let's say, the third diamond from the corner. I'll be using the same end point, which is, again, half ball thin, using the three o'clock sight. Seems to work.
Now, this is the point about here, just past two and a half diamonds, that I'm recommending uh, you no longer use the three o'clock siding. However, if you wished, and the ball were beyond that point, you can use the three o'clock sighting, but instead of aiming at half ball thin, you could aim it right at half ball. Or if it was farther down the rail, you could aim half ball thick, just a, a hair inside of the half ball. And that would pocket the ball for you. However, I'm not recommending that. So what I'm recommending is that at this point, at two and a half diamonds, to use the 12 o'clock siding and aim directly at half ball. Now what I want you to see again is the triangle here. The line between the eight ball and the cue ball. What we have here is again, the cue ball is one, two diamonds on the short rail. And the object ball is one, two, three and a half. Right there, baby. Three and a half balls, three and a half diamonds from the head string. So if you look at a 90 degree triangle that has a 30 degree and 60 degree component um, angles, this is what you're going to see. And so that angle right here is 30 degrees, which means that the supplemental cut angle right here, if you can watch see the rail and the cue right there, this angle right here, that is what's called the cut angle actually on the other side of the ball. That is uh, the geometric cut angle which is 30 degrees. Well, that calls for a half ball hit. Now again, you can make it with the three o'clock siding, but you have to start going thicker and thicker. However, I'll aim with the 12 o'clock siding and aim directly at half ball. Seems to work. What if we take it down to the first diamond? It's not exactly a 30 degree angle anymore, but it's pretty darn close. And I'll just do the same thing. 12 o'clock siding, aim at half ball. Goes right in. Now it will continue to work all the way down to the point. Okay, let's try a variation. In this case, I'm going to use the one ball, and I'm going to have it at the third diamond, one ball off the rail. A few balls on the head spot. We know from our previous experience that if we use the three o'clock siding <coughs> and aim at a half ball thin, it when the ball was on the rail, send it into the pocket. So. Uh, if we do the same thing, it should send it straight down the rail. Now, this point in front of the side pocket, as we denoted earlier, was the 45 degree angle. So this is a little less. Uh, so it's either gonna come down here and hit the near the uh, point of the pocket or a little bit further because it is a little less than 45 degrees. But uh, let's just verify that. So I'm aiming three o'clock, half ball thin. Okay, theory worked out. So now let's set it up again. Third diamond, 
One ball off the rail. So instead of when you see a ball off the rail, you start to see this kind of an angle. Instead of hitting half ball thin with a three o'clock siding, aim for right at half ball. Seems to work. Now what if, and I'm improving this in the video, I pretty much do all improv. What if I was three balls off the rail? What do I do then? Well, as I get back here and look at it, it actually looks like a 30 degree angle almost. It's closer to a 30 degree angle now than a 45 degree angle. So my predilection would be to uh, use the 12 o'clock siding and aim at half ball. But just for experimental reasons, and you should try this too, let's see if we can try to pocket it with the three o'clock siding. Well, I know that at that point, at two, one ball off the rail, it went in when I aimed at half ball. So in this case, I'm going to aim half ball thick, three o'clock siding. So just a hair inside of half ball. Now again, I don't prefer that when I see my angles on the table. And as you practice this, you're going to start seeing these angles too, wherever on the table you may be and recognize them for what they are and be able to know your reference shots, whether you're on or off or what. But um, it's nice to know. So uh, let's um, try another variation. Try this. What if... We are now the cue ball is off the rail a little farther off the spot a little farther. So if I use a three o'clock siding and I aim at half ball thin, if this the cue ball was on the head spot, it would go in the pocket. I'm a little off the head spot. So what does that mean? It's a little bit more of a cut. However, we know that a little bit more of a cut will still put it in. That the variation in length relative to the degree change in the cut angle is relatively insignificant. Still pockets. So I could probably get away with aiming right at the same spot. Which is the three o'clock siding at half ball thin. Now isn't this lovely? I mean, you have basically now two, two endpoints, and you can pretty much make any shot from side pocket all the way down the rail based on the reference point of the head spot. Now, what you're going to get from that as you practice that more and more is you're going to end up with positions on the table that... Um, you know, you don't know where the ball will be. And you'll be able to recognize the angle. <clears throat> this almost looks like a 30 degree angle to me now. Except it's actually a little, um, a little less. So, I just have to make an adjustment. I aim it, use my 12 o'clock siding, name it half ball. And now I aim a little thicker. There you go. Fortunately, these pockets are buckets. <laughs> but uh, 
as you practice and I calibrate more and more, just like you, uh, you'll be able to make more and more shots. So I hope you enjoy this draw. I want you to practice it more. And uh, uh, eventually you'll be able to see all kinds of lines on the table for 45 degree and 30 degree cuts. And you'll be able to perform those in your game uh, consistently and well. Now this is uh, the sighted ferrule aiming system is uh, one part of the Lucky Loser composite aiming system. Uh, I hope to bring more of these to you so that you can get the complete system.